The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Carrot Roosteros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Jeremy Boychin, who's Agronomy Research Extension Specialist with the Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How is it going today? I'm doing great, Kara. As you can see, we are at Wheatstock in Forestburg with Battle River Research Group, and I'm excited to be out in the field. Absolutely, and you have, yeah, a very bright, uh, if anyone can catch it, Woodstock, Wheatstock, we got it all here. <laughs> um, anyways, we are here today to talk about wheat stem sawfly. There uh, has been, so we, we, I mean, it's, it's scouting season. You're seeing lots of insects. It's a dry year. They're out and about. What, what are you seeing with wheat stem sawfly? Yeah, so this is the time of year where we're starting to see some of those wheat stems topple over from wheat stem sawfly. Uh, so wheat stem sawfly uh, is a pest that comes in on wheat and we've seen based on forecasts, you know, it's, it has a lot of pres presence in the southern part of the province. Uh, so in that Claire's home Nanton area, um, south to the southeastern part of the province and into the special areas. If you don't know whether you're in an area that has wheat stem sawfly, sawfly pressure, uh, take a look at the alberta.ca or prairie pest monitoring website. So yes, we're seeing uh, the impacts of wheat stem sawfly, which they move into the wheat stem, uh, they tunnel down the wheat stem, and then near the end of the season, they'll cut a little notch in that wheat stem, and then we start to see those those wheat heads topple over. And now you'll actually see that like quote unquote sawdust in the stem, correct? After they cut it off? Yeah, it's a great time of year to go and look at the impact that wheat stem sawfly is having on your fields. At this point, the wheat stem sawfly has burrowed into the stem and move down to the bottom of that stem uh, and not put a little notch into the bottom of that stem and that's when we start to see that topple over. Uh, typically you'll see it more pressured in the outside of your fields but what you want to do is you want to go out and collect about 10 stems uh, at a multiple locations and split them open. When you split them open you'll see frass like sawdust in there. You might even find the wheat stem sawfly larvae in there. Um, and then uh, you can determine what kind of pressure you're under. So if you're at zero to two stems per 10 stems, that you're a very low pressure. Uh, if you're two to four, then you're at moderate pressure. If you're four plus per 10 stems, then you're in the higher pressure area. Um, and usually the recommendation is around 15% of the stems where you want to be thinking about using a solid stem variety. And is there anything that can be done at this time of the year? I mean, variety is going to be next year, but is there anything that can be done now? So while you're scouting, um, there's nothing really that can be done. However, while you're harvesting, uh, there is actually a beneficial that we want to consider when we're thinking about wheat stem sawfly, which is Bracon cephi. Uh, it actually lives in the wheat stem just above uh, the wheat stem sawfly. So when we're going out and we're cutting uh, or, or, or harvesting the wheat crop, we want to think about make sure, making sure that we're maintaining that beneficial in the wheat stem. So usually if we're cutting above about 15 centimeters, um, from the ground up that stem, uh, usually we're able to maintain that beneficial in there. So while you're harvesting, if you do see pressure, then you want to try and cut a little bit higher and it's going to help maintain that beneficial and it's going to help you later on. Um, next year is when you can start making decisions on better management like selecting a variety that's solid stemmed. Um, right now with CWRS, there's not a ton of options. Um, they're semi-solid stem, but they don't provide that complete control um, and you're still going to see some impacts. Um, you know, the other option is to switch to a Durham. Uh, there are solid stem variety options when it comes to Durham. Um, the one thing to think about when you are using a semi or solid stem is to go at a lower seeding rate than you would uh, with a non-solid stem. So in that 300 seeds per meter squared, that's where the research shows that you're going to get the most solid stem. Following that, um, 
you know, before seeding, you could do extra harrowing or more aggressive harrowing. Uh, the wheat stem sawfly lives in the stem uh, just above the surface. Uh, so if you do go through and harrow, and you do, if you did see pressure last year and you go through and harrow this year, um, you can do it a little bit more aggressively or do two passes uh, and potentially shuffle some of that stem up uh, and maybe uh, kill some of those wheat stem sawflies and reduce pressure. The other thing we want to think about at, har at harvest is if we are starting to see um, some of those stems lodging uh, is to potentially harvest a little bit early. Um, so before we start to lose that, that yield and quality uh, from those stems falling over, you can, depending on where the pressure is, either swath the outside rounds um, or swath the entire crop a little bit early uh, rather than losing the quality and losing the yield um, to it falling over before you can get out to it. Anything else you'd like to add? No, that's everything. Uh, just remember to keep scouting and grow great wheat. Okay, thank you very much.